Hi, Sandra here from Create in Spain and today I wanted to give you a little bit of a helping hand with the design process of some pop-ups. Now I designed this Christmas tree, three-dimensional Christmas tree. I designed everything from the scroll work inside to the actual, you know, complete cutout file. So I will be generous and I will give you that. But what I wanted to do was to go through a few things that you might find a little bit confusing when you're making pop-ups. You don't necessarily always want to use what someone has given you for the pop-up. You might decide you want to do a house, a tree, uh, a box, a bed, anything for a three-dimensional pop-up. But you may not be aware of how to actually go about it. You might be able to design your three-dimensional object, but you won't necessarily know how to go around designing the base to put it on and how to attach it and get it set up so that it's as you want it. So that's what this video is about. And then later on, when I've completed it, I'll show you the card that I actually made from the file. So I have my three dimensional object and I have here a piece of A5 paper. Now this is the way to go rather than wasting your card stock this is the way to go. You want to do a test and I'll show you why. If I want to put my three-dimensional object in here, I think, yeah, that's okay. That's where I want to put it. And you might design some tabs to go on it and say, yeah, right, that's it. But you'll find if you do it that way, you can't close your card. If you put four tabs on instead of two tabs on, you won't be able to close your card. You need two tabs only. Now, there's a couple of different ways of doing it and one of the things that I've given you in the file is this piece here which is a base tab and what you have to do, it's got a crease line here, look, what you have to do is you have to line up that crease with the centre fold of your card. It has to go along that fold. If it doesn't it's not going to work. I've got some temporary tape on here and if I close that, you can see that it will close flat and when it opens, if those didn't have sticky on them, which they're a bit sticky still, that will be springing up with my object on the top of it. Okay. If I were to put this on here like so and glue it in place, that would go down with my tabs and it will close flat. Now, this is all very well and good, but if you have a design like this, which has got fretwork in it, you might be able to see that on the inside. And you may not want that to be the case. All right, so I will show you how to do it so you can't see that. Now, the other way of doing it is to do what I've done on my proper one here and that's put the tabs on the base of the object. You want them on adjoining sides, preferably opposite to the one that you've got your seam going down. That's for reasons of strength. You don't want to stress that seam any more than you have to. So I might think to myself, right, okay, I want to plunk that in there. Well, as I already said, you can't have it so that it's that way to the seam. It has to be one of your corners here, one of these edges has to go down the seam. You might think, oh yeah, I'll, I'll put it there. That'll be really good. And so you stick it down and you close it up and then you discover, because what happens is it will close down like so, that it's sticking out of your card. The card doesn't cover it. So that is something you have to be aware of. Now, what's the best way of sticking these down? Well, I found the best way of doing it is to place one of your edges, one of your corners to the fold and you can move it up and down there however you wish as long as it doesn't go off the edge of your paper. Now this is why I've chosen a piece of A5 paper because mostly I work with A6 cards which is that size. So if I stick that down there I know that that is not going to be sticking out of my card. But the other thing is, if I turn my tab around the other way so that 
it's able to be pulled up and I can just grab hold of that. Right. It's going to be positioned eventually when it opens up, it'll be positioned like so. And that may be as I want it. If I want it any lower down the card than that, I'm going to have to have a bigger card. It's as simple as that. I cannot do it with that size object on this card and have it centered like so. It just isn't possible. So I'd have to put it up like that. Now, the other thing is with a three dimensional object, you have a choice. I could have it so that it's fatter that way, or I could have it so that it was like so. The choice depends on the angle that I put this at. If I put it here, it's going to be narrower. So it's going to be sort of oval that shape. If I make this angle bigger, it's going to make it wider. And so that will determine how wide my shape is. Okay. Now, in the case of this, and this example was done on purpose, you might think, okay, I can work out where I need this to be and I can stick this down. No, you really don't want to do that. Because you can't access the base of this from the top, your best plan is to stick this in here. Make sure it's nice and level. So get it stuck in like so. And then when it's stuck, put it down on your card. Make sure both of these corners are on the center fold and then stick it down. Obviously, making sure that you're not going to get it off of the card. So in order to do that, you will need to mark your paper or your card in some way or other. Now, this again is one of the reasons why I suggest you get a piece of A5 paper, because you can transfer the markings from that to whatever card you're using, rather than possibly messing up your card with marks that you don't want to show. All right. So that is how you would do that. However, it is, in some cases, easier to do it this way. You take your three dimensional object, you work out what angle you want it to go at. So I want it to go there. I'm quite happy with the position of that. Okay, so you see where your tab is. If you bend your tabs back, you can then do a line like so. Now, normally you would use a ruler, but you can use the ruler when you go to do your cut line. So we'd use a line like so. But what you need to do then is to fold your paper in half, take a metal rule, and I do advise a metal one because plastic ones tend to get dips and various things cut out of them and cut through both at the same time. doesn't matter if you make it a little bit wider than your tab. That just makes your tabs easier to place. So then you can take your object, you can put your tab through there. And through there, you can flatten your object, pull your tabs through so that they don't go any further, and you can stick those tabs down. Then, actually what I'll do is I'll just put that in there and fold it back, and then hopefully it might just stay for long enough for the demonstration. So pull it back. I'm just going to fold those back. And then when you open the card, voila, it opens. And you can't see the mechanism for that opening, so it's rather nice. It's very neat. It's a lovely way of doing it. And then when it closes, it just goes back down again. Now, obviously, what you do is you make this of a nice pattern card or whatever you decorate it as you wish. And you then insert this into your normal card base. But that is how to do it and get it where you want it to be and make sure that it's hidden.
hidden from view when the card is closed. Now, me, I haven't finished the designing of this yet because I decided I just can't, I really, I really can't help myself. I'm going to light this up. <laughs> I really, really can't stop myself doing lighting up cards. It's terrible. I'm addicted to them. So what I'm going to do, because I can, <laughs> I'm going to put an LED under there and I'm going to make it so that when the card is open, the light is on and it all looks really pretty. And obviously I will be doing decoration of this and my card base and so on and so forth. Now, how am I going to do that? Well, I've already done a video on how to do a permanently lighting up card and it's going to be really, really simple. What I'm going to do, if I take this out here, I'm going to put my LED round about here, I think. I am not going to put it on the crease. Do not put an LED on the crease because it's going to cause you problems. And then all I'm going to do is tie that LED up to a battery, which could go here or it could go over here, wherever. It doesn't make much difference. I'm going to make sure that these two lines don't cross each other. Put the battery on with a little, um, not a, a press button, but a, a flip peel and stick, as I like to call them. And then I will either put that on the inside or I've been thinking I might put it on the outside with the instructions and make a little hole in the front of the card, wherever that other hole was, it's here. So it'd be round about here. So then make a design element that lights up from the front. So I get the person who opens or who gets the card to do the flip, peel and stick. And they think, oh, isn't that pretty? The card lights up on the front. Ha ha, little do they know. Because when it opens up, it's going to be lit up on the inside as well. That's the theory. I'll be back later to show you if it works. Bye for now. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me being a bit foggy. I've cut out another car because I did the first original design and decided there were some improvements I could make and yeah, so I just decided to redo it. Now I've cut out another one of these trees and as it happens, I had some a blue wire. I don't know if you can see that there, blue green wire. And I just thought, oh, wouldn't that look really nice as a star on top of my Christmas tree? So I kind of got my pliers out and fashioned a little star. Now, if you want to get coloured wire like this, I got mine in a shop called Tiger. There are branches all over the UK and there's actually branches in Spain, which is brilliant. It's actually quite an interesting shop. So what you need to do for this is to make sure that when you turn in your seam here, you match up the bottom corners, the top, and make sure you can press it flat. Only then glue up that side. Okay. Now I've got my hot glue gun waiting at the moment. It's still heating up. So I'm going to do that. But what I've done with the star, I've used a little piece of sticky tape and I've just curled the end of the wire up and I've threaded the tape through one section. So that can't actually pull out. If I were to just put a single piece of wire in and not to bend that back, if it got loose, it could pull out. And as it happens, it can't. As long as that sticky tape doesn't come undone, it can't. And in fact, because it's got the bend, it's less likely to pull out of the top of the tree anyway. If you're going to give this to a young child, don't put the wire in. Um, but there again, since it's got lights and batteries, you probably wouldn't give it to a young child anyway. So I'm going to glue this in place and then I'm going to leave it to set for a little while before putting it into my card base. Now this is my card base and I've made some adjustments to this because when I did it the first time around the circle wasn't actually truly in the middle of the card which annoyed me 
and when I put the tree on the tree wasn't in the middle of the circle because of that so I knew it would annoy me a lot so I decided to redo it and I made this so that the cuts are in the cut file now you can choose to put your tree or decoration wherever it is you want to put it just ignore those particular shapes and cuts it's your choice now in order to put this together the easiest way I have discovered is to put just the one tab through to the other side of the card first now there's a very good reason for this if I put both tabs in when I fold this flat there is a fair amount of bulk there and it's fine for when you're closing the card but it's not very good when you're putting a front onto this part of it it makes it more difficult to do so what I'm going to do is to make sure that my tab is well seated there fold this back flat and then fold my tab to this side and glue it in place and again I'm using hot glue for the simple reason that it's going to make a very firm bond because I've got the glitter side going down here and I've done that because on the other side I've got the hole for a light now if you're not using a light you can ignore that but I'm using a light and I'm doing a really nice nifty little design feature here so that's why I've put it that way so if I now put this up if I wanted to I could put the other tab through the slot there we go that's <laughs> when it's stuck down that's what it will actually look like but I don't want to stick it down at the moment I want it to remain like that because it's a lot easier to work on this side when I can put that flat than it is any other way now the one thing that I do need to do at some point is to put a paper backing on here now you can either use the same card or you can use paper and I didn't have enough card to do the same paper on the back or the same card on the back so I'm actually going to use paper to do that okay that's what I'm going to use now because I have stuck this down already I could actually put that paper onto that side and have it in place ready to go because my front panel is going to go over the top of that this is simply to hide this slit here and the edge of that slit there this means I can still get at this to put my other my other flap through and then I can glue the rest of that down afterwards I can use double sided tape or whatever it is that I want to use but I've got it in place ready and because I've got that in place I can now work on the front of this and put that on the top and then lastly I'll do the inside of the card with this piece okay so the next thing I need to do as far as this goes is my circuit and this is very very simple and I have my wire oh I forgot I need to mark where my battery is to make sure that I get things in the right place so this hole here is where my battery is I'm just going to take a pokey tool and I'm going to put a little hole about half a centimeter away from my battery hole because that is going to go through that hole there and then that's how it's going to be switched on we're going to have something covering that but that will switch it on but it will stop it from contacting the battery by accident because it's going to be kept away from the edge of the battery by that little piece there 
that's how it works. Now I need to make sure this is going to be taped in place. So. Leaving a couple of inches down here isn't a bad idea. And I'm going to just put some tape over the rest of it. Now, interestingly enough, I found when I did this card yesterday that I really didn't need to put a foam layer in. That's not so bulky that it makes it a problem. And I took the foam layer out and I just used double side tape when I was putting it together and that seemed to work fine. So I've got everything in place and if I put that wire underneath the battery it lights up. And so that's going to light up our Christmas tree on the inside. Now that's going to be a bit of a surprise to people because when they see the card what they're going to see is this front panel and they're going to have the instruction to close the circuit and they'll have something lighting up on here and they'll think oh yeah that lights up how nice and then when they open the card and see the Christmas tree lighting up that'll be a real oh wow that's the idea so I can now fold that and everything is hidden and when I complete the circuit, the light will be on. So that's as I need it. So what I need to do now is to actually stick the front panel on. So I'm going to do that and come back in a moment because I really do need to be over that in order to do it. Right, so I've stuck on my front panel. As you can see, it bulges very, very slightly there. Um, but to be honest, I quite like the fact that it doesn't have the extra bulk of the foam on it. So I've got the wire stuck out through the front. If I put that over there, it lights up on that side and of course on the inside because the hole's there as well. So I'm going to move that out of the way at the moment. The mechanics of it uh, or the electronics of it are completed. And what I need to do is to put this little flap through here and to glue that in place. So that goes like that. Push this back and just fold that up just a little bit. Give me a better contact. There we go. Make sure that that is where it's supposed to be before you put any glue there particularly if like me you're using hot glue at least I would be if my glue was moving through the gun which it isn't at the moment right okay a good amount of glue there it's not like it's going to be going anywhere ha ah, that's hot there we go and just take any wisps off like so. So, there we are. I decided I didn't like the fact that the back of the card had paper on it. So what I did was I trimmed it down to about that much because it was already stuck on there and I didn't want to weaken things by trying to pull it off. But it does act as a nice binder for the edge there. I would keep it regardless. So I trimmed it off and then I've put a piece of card over the top to finish it off on the outside. I think that looks a lot better, a lot neater. So now I need to just do all the various trimming of this and we'll have a completed card. Right, after much thought, much dithering around, I finally completed my card. I've put a Rudolph on the front. Now I didn't draw this one, this one came off of Pixabay. It's a free file and all I did was a print and cut of it. I've added a little shadow underneath him because otherwise he looks like he's floating in midair. 
the holly berries and the leaves I had drawn myself so I will find that file and include that. The Merry Christmas I hand wrote on black cardstock. Now this is my little mechanism for switching the lamp on. Basically peel, push and stick and then his nose will light up so people will think oh yes isn't that sweet his nose lights up. Then when you open it up, you have the Christmas tree, a little bit of holly, and you have some reindeer around the tree too. These I have made double-sided, so if you see them from the back, they still look like reindeer rather than little white blobs. And I've just sort of put them in some snow. Now when you're doing this bit, the same rule applies. You need to have your centre line down on the centre fold of the card and then it will close nicely. When you put it on, put one side on, glue that on and make sure it's firmly in place. Then semi-close it because you need this side to go around that side of the tree, not just here. And work out where you need to put your other side when it closes like that, you get the full effect of them standing up. So I am really pleased with that. And now I need to do a little bit of nighttime photography. I'll put my blind down. I've already got my door shut. And I forgot that I need to keep this uncovered at the moment. I'm just going to take this off because I don't want to stick that down yet. And I'm just going to put a little bit of tape there. So I put my blind down fully. There we are. And it actually does glow pink. It doesn't look like it, but I've put a piece of cellophane under there and it is glowing pink. It doesn't pick it up on the camera for some reason. And then when it's opened, it opens up. You see the Christmas tree from the top and then see it from the side, which of course is the view that you would normally have if you had it on a shelf. 